Hey, in this episode of Franchise Secrets, I have Trevor Rapoli on, who is the founder of Franchise Filming, and we get into a lot of things around filming, video content, et cetera, but we dive into storytelling. There's a way to do and tell stories that a lot of people are missing in the franchising world. Whether you're a franchisee or a franchisor, you need to understand on how to tell a story, and it starts with a hook, and I'll let you listen to this podcast with Trevor. Representing Franchise Secrets, Eric Von Horn. Trevor, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me on, Eric. Um, I met you kind of officially for the first time out at the Springboard Conference, and I got invited to be a part of this uh, the Franchise Masters deal that uh, you and Madeline were doing, and I thought, you know, I'm going to go in, and there's going to be a camera and some interview questions. And I walked in, and there were lights, camera, and action. It was uh, it was a full production. So I'm like, um, I'd seen you around. I'm so glad to have finally like met you face to face, and um, you know, become friends now, and um, learn a lot from you. And I uh, wanted you to come into the pot onto the podcast and talk about like what you do and help some franchisees and some franchisors out with uh storytelling, filming, all of that stuff. So, so glad you're here. Thank thank you Eric. Yeah, it's kind of funny how we set that room up and Maddie said the same thing. She's like, "I thought you're just going to have one camera." I'm like, "No, we got to have these big lights, Hollywood lights. We have two cameras." What no one knows is that room took us 9 hours to set up. Um and we ran to Home Goods at 10 p.m. the night before to make it look like an office because we didn't want to make it look like a like a room no. and it worked so well so i went to home goods looked for green curtains i'm like i don't even know what i'm buying but i got to get curtains and i ran back so that was a super fun 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 time that um why don't we start uh with how that came about and like what what do you envision from that from the franchise master so talk about that a little bit because i think That'll be interesting to a lot of franchisors out there and probably mm -hmm. franchisees or people that are thinking about getting into franchising. Yeah. So Maddie from Net sort of is is her her and I about a month and a half ago were like, there's something missing in the market, right? For people to learn, it's either attend this low resolution webinar that's 55 minutes and boring. Or it's spend five thousand dollars to go to a franchise show and pay for hotels and flights. Like, where's the middle ground, right? So, what this solves is it gives people the ability to learn from people that have done it. Yourself, Mary from Neighborly. I mean, it is just it 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 allows people to learn in a quick fifteen to twenty minute video exactly what they need to succeed, and that's what I'm so excited about is the ability for people to learn and it's really engaging there's story there's pictures if they say i i began my business at age 13 we ask them can i have pictures of you at age 13 <laughs> it's painting the picture like people are visual people so all right so people need to find out franchise masters was it franchise masters.com how do people how do people get into that find that learn learn about that yeah, so the final website and um is is franchisemasters.com. Um and it's not live yet. Uh but it will be live. Um I think our goal is next Monday the first 7. Um so by Monday, um by the time this releases it should be live. So go to franchisemasters.com and um look at some high high production, high value because it was a while, it, the interview lasted a while, but you were able to, mm -hmm. and that takes a lot of time, like editing, editing these things to pull out the, the best of the best. So you're not just, you know, listening to a bunch of, uh, rambling on. So how, like, give me an example, how long does it take to edit one of those down to 15 minutes from like the time that you record to Man. finish product? How much time goes into that one, one video? So and it's funny, we track data now, right? I used to just guess. Now my team will tell me, hey, this video took X uh, X amount of time. 
Eric, I can't tell you if we wanted to make a boring 15 minute video and just put what you said out there with all the ums, with all the everything, it would take us like an hour, right? But in order to paint the picture and tell the story and graphics and, and engage people, I mean, each video is literally taking us like 25 hours. Wow. Like, and that's probably on the low side for us to create the right video and it takes time to tell a story yet no one's taking that time well let's jump into storytelling let because i think this is going to be helpful for franchisees and franchisors um i mean there's what are some of your when did you first get into storytelling like what what are some of the foundational things that people need to know about storytelling <laughs> i think about story brand is kind of one of the first times that i uh -huh. heard about storytelling with don miller but uh -huh. like give us give us some of your experience on around storytelling how'd you get started when did it become clear that this was a path that you wanted to go down yeah, so i'm uh in 2003 i was 13 years old my dad had that big VHS camera, you know, like the shoulder camera. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if you ever. Oh, yeah. Did we have some of those? those? Yeah. We right. Made some movies out with those things. Of course. And people that are super young are like, what is that? It's like, yes, they're big, big VHS cameras where you, that it, it was your only option. <laughs> and so to, to film stuff, right. And you would lug that around. I tried to pick that up as like a kid. It kind of like weighed me down. And my dad's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, yeah, but I want to film something. And I just fell in love with capturing the moment it could be and my dad filmed this it could be my mom happy it could be my mom yelling at us it could be the babies crying it was just filming and capturing the moment and also eric hearing the moment i think that's a really important aspect people don't what do you mean when they, what do you mean by that what do you mean hearing the moment if there's laughter in a marketing video why don't you turn it up hear the natural laughter hear the kids saying mom come back as She's dropping them off to school, let's say, which we just filmed a scene like that. It was the cutest thing ever. So, you know, having a moment like that. So that started my love for it. Um, I was charging 11 bucks a DVD. I was converting VHS to DVD. Yes, I jumped on that train. I actually printed out a thousand flyers, put them in mailboxes, Eric. I thought my phone would ring off the hook. As a 13 year old, can you guess how many phone calls I got? Zero. I got like one and it was my aunt and she paid like 62 bucks. Right. So it was a great learning uh, uh, lesson. Everyone a, has an aunt. Right? I should have said one because everybody has an aunt like that. That's like, yep. I got this little entrepreneur. I'll give them, I'll give them my, my money. Mm -hmm. Attention franchisors and franchisees. There are two really important resources that I want to share with you that will help you avoid costly mistakes and increase your enterprise value. The first is our free Facebook group. It's a community that has over 4,000 franchisees and franchisors in it. When somebody asks a question, they get honest and authentic answers from multiple perspectives. You can join the group for free over at franchisesecrets.com forward slash Facebook. The second resource I wanna share with you is if you're a franchisee and you wanna be around a community of successful Zs and other brands and in other industries, this is why I created the Franchisee Mastermind. If you want access to the best single and multi-unit owners to know what they're doing, or if you wanna be around other multi-brand owners, then you'll wanna check out my Franchisee Mastermind. The reason why people join is they want access to my Rolodex, my connections, to each other, they want to shortcut success, both short-term and long-term. Links will be in the show notes or at scalablefranchise.com. And, and so I say all that because that made me fall in love with weddings. So I've shot over 300 weddings in my lifetime, and it has been some of the most emotional and real moments. I would be getting sad and happy for this couple as they walk away. That's where my love for story and emotion comes into franchising um i walked the floor at ifa 2019 and i thought i'd see so many videos so many like franchising is this emotional thing like they're gonna be set i went to every booth i went to every single website i probably saw maybe five percent of them actually doing it right telling the story of the franchisees that love them or the story of the brand so 
been filming my entire life. So you can spend a bunch of money on high quality um, and uh, high production quality and high quality from someone like you that can understand and hear things and see things and draw that out or maybe and or people are doing it with an iPhone, Mm -hmm. you know, with customers and testimonials and franchisees. And so explain the difference, how you see it, because you're more on the professional side, but there's also like that user generated content or just let's just uh, pull out the iPhone because cameras are amazing on iPhones these days and record something, whether it's a customer testimonial, franchisee, grand opening, or something like that. So where do you, where is the iPhone helpful, useful, good to do? And where does higher quality come into play? Yeah, so I get that a lot. So whenever I get asked about the iPhone, it's not just about the iPhone and what it can film. It's the resources involved to use the iPhone. It's the scheduling to get the person on the iPhone. It's the um, editing to make that video the right, the right, the the right way that's going to engage and hook someone. Right. Mm-hmm. So I tell people all the time: our specialty is helping franchisors create friend dev videos that that are going to inspire people to become a franchisee. And no matter how good iPhones get, there's still an experience that 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 has to happen on how to unpack that story. Right. And how to make sure that you film not just the franchisee at work, but the franchisees at home with their kids around the dinner table. No one's doing that. So there's a place for user content, but also ask yourself, will an iPhone video help me sell a franchise and truly nurture them down the funnel? That's what I would ask. You're saying so you're saying iPhone iPhone has no business in telling a full story. Uh, so I so actually Eric, this is actually great. I'm I'm happy that we went to this. <laughs> Pairing iPhone videos, like selfie videos of people mm-hmm. mixed in with a real engaging on-site interview, it works flawlessly. We did it with you know, you on the friend masters, right? We asked yeah. for photos, we asked for videos. So the question people have to ask themselves is who's doing the legwork to make sure that iPhone video gets scheduled, complete, filmed, edited, and done. That's the other part of the story. Where, uh, so how long is a full like story, that emotional story, how, how long is that video? Is it multiple videos? Is it one like five minute thing that really paints a whole picture for a prospective franchisee? Like, give me, give me more, give me more, man. Give you more. So what ends up happening, Eric, is people overthink this and they end up making nothing or they end up making something simple or cheesy, right? So the thing that franchisees crave the most is validation. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how great the brand thinks they are or how great the, the leadership looks or how great they talk, there's a wall up. There's this wall up, I don't believe you. Like I do, I like you, but I don't believe you. And I read this stat from HubSpot. It said four four out of five people don't trust brands, but they will trust a complete random person on the internet talking about that brand. So it's super important that franchisors have validation content of franchisees and the best length eric is 90 seconds you gotta hook them at the front with a this franchise changed my life logo and then go into the story so let's talk about the hook for those that don't know about the hook they're getting hooked it's like a fishing hook right Mm -hmm. like uh grabs them you you got it you gotta pull it and and hook them Mm -hmm. is that where the term hook comes from yeah so i imagine it If you are fishing, right, what's going to hook in a fish? A piece of, and hopefully this example connects, a piece of bait that's five years old and that's moldy, or is it a fresh piece of- That would work for carp. Like carp would love that. But most of us are not fishing for carp because you don't want carp. Like you Mm -hmm. don't want that. You don't want that. So you got to 
you got to have the right stuff on the hook. You've got, so you're fishing for well, sam- salmon or halibut or like rainbow trout, rainbow trout on a fly. That's Ooh, I like, like that. that. That's, that's what you want. So, yeah. so use that. We're not using the carp because you're not going to catch in a rainbow trout uh, with some moldy, uh, nasty old meat. And, and I think that's what franchisors are naturally getting if they don't make the content that hooks the right people, right? So with the biggest error I see franchisors making is they spend the first three seconds on their logo. And I used to, and I, I, I used to do the same thing. So I, I totally get it. But what will work better is a franchisee saying, this franchise changed my life and I really get to see my kids more. Bam. So nine, so ninety seconds is the ideal mm-hmm. length. How long for a hook? Because as you were saying that, like, how long do you have to hook or grab somebody's attention to for them to think, I want to not switch the screen, mm-hmm. turn off my phone or whatever, go to the next, go to the next thing, swipe up. Like, yeah, well, how long do you have to hook somebody? So, um, HubSpot says you have four point five seconds to hook someone to hook them to encourage them to watch more now it's tricky as they watch more what are you doing to engage them to watch more tell me what are we doing to engage them to watch more i so eric i can tell you so what have you seen your full length video of the friend uh, i haven't i I haven't you guys have been holding out on me i don't think you trust me out there to put it (laughs) out yeah i I think you're thinking i'm going to put it in the facebook group or something like that so i don't don't think i'm trustworthy yet yeah, reach out to my team and we'll and we'll and we'll um definitely send that to you. So <laughs> everything you said, we didn't keep seeing your face. No matter how good you are at speaking, which you are, visitors get bored of people talking. So you want to visually show it. So when you said I began my first business, we we asked for a photo. When you I think you went on a fishing trip or something, there was something about your scene, we yep. asked for that. Yep. When you mentioned you grew X amount of brands in X amount of time, we made a graph that animated in to keep the engagement. Uh-huh. Same thing applies to marketing videos. Everything someone says, say, okay, I, I need to film that now. So if they say that they love their job, you better go film them at, at, at actually shaking hands with someone. If they say they love their kids and they get to go on vacation, ask them for an iPhone video of them on vacation or schedule that in. Go to their house. And I say all the time, can we have a pizza party? They're like, pizza party? Why would I have a pizza party? Oh, just bring your staff, invite your kids, bring their friends, and we're going to get the most awesome scenes. And now we're visually painting the picture of a life that they can have. All right. So you got the hook and then talk about emotion. Like how do you, you have an ear for things and you probably have the ability to ask the right questions to the person to get the emotion out of it. And I did some of this. I'm not nearly as good as you, but I had a, um, have a, a questionnaire that we send new franchisees once they become a franchisee with any of our portfolio brands. And the questions, I've designed them in a way to get emotional answers versus factual answers. Mm. So how do you um, give the audience an example of you just intuitively knowing what to ask somebody to get an emotional response versus a factual response? Yeah. So it's always going to be easier to get a fact across or, hey, hey, make sure you say this fact because it sounds really cool, but it's the harder part to get the emotion out, right? Mm -hmm. And Harvard says that 95% of us buy based on emotion, not facts. So if a hundred people go to go to your website and there's not anyone telling a story, you're not, you're not, you're literally losing 95 of those guys if you just tell a story. So one of my favorite ways to unpack the story, Eric, is Allowing awkward moments to come into the interview. Some of the most awesome things we've ever gotten was allowing the the like aw- the the awkward silence when they say this 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 franchise just changed my life. 
most people would move on. But we are like, and what what did it do to make your life so much better? And they're like, I get to see my kids more. And how and how does that make you feel that you get to see your kids more? Using the word feel yep. is the way to do it and pull it. And there's a quick story. I did this at a restaurant franchise. She looked to the left a little bit, Eric. She she was just like, Yeah, I just love this. I just I just love this job. And she went, Most people would move on. I was like, Why did you just do that? And she goes, I don't want to, I don't want to cry. And I'm in my head, I'm like, I would let we need to pull this story out because the world deserves to hear this story. Like this world, the world deserves to hear how much this franchise made their life better. So what she did is she ended up crying on film and she goes, I used to live on the streets and now I own five locations. And so I, my skin is like, and just silence. And I went deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's still one of my favorite videos. So did you enlarge the tears on her eyes and zoom in as they were, as they were coming I, down? I slowly zoomed in like you hear that dun, 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 like the slow. <laughs> <laughs> but you said the word feel in my, okay. qu- that's the first word that came to mind in when I have these series of questions that we send new franchisees, I use the word feel. How mm. did this make you feel? How did you feel? feel this? How did you feel about whatever? Even like, how did you feel about the leadership team? And mm. that starts to bring out different, you know, like instead of just like think about them or what did you like about them? Mm-hmm. You know, how did you feel? And then they, they hear that and you, you may get a similar response, but you might get a more of an emotional response. And you're absolutely right. So many franchise ors out there are selling on facts when most franchisees are buying based on emotion, even though franchisors think they're 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 doing it based on the facts. Now, there's a lot of facts involved because you're buying a business; they're putting in a lot of money. This is a big decision for them, but it is an emotional decision that um, that they make at the end of the day, most of the time. Is that? I mean, Harvard says that, but is that? I mean, what's yeah. your experience? So it's all about Eric. Those facts need to be said but it, they show the facts at the wrong stage they show it at the top of the funnel when they're trying to get their email and their phone number that's not when you spit facts that's when you tell a story you say look at these 25 franchisees we made their life better here they are here they are here they are here they and just just be the only franchise brand that makes them feel something and something else i like to do is make them laugh so we actually make an outtake reel for every day of filming so we will make one for yours and for and for everybody's. It just it just gets them laughing. So now you're making them feel something and you're making them laugh. I mean, what franchisor would do that in the sales cycle, right? Yep, that's gold. Yeah, I've I've talked to franchisors because we talk to franchisors. Seems like daily. My calendars. A lot of them are new franchisors. Some of them we're working with to you know become a, a portfolio brand at Front Street, but. Um, sometimes we get like, Hey, this is our sales process. And like, what do you send them at first? Well, even before we get on the phone, we have a 25 page PDF that we send with everything. And you're like, we're like, you're kidding me. And they, and they think that they're leading with giving them all of the information is the right thing to do because then you get a higher quality lead because you're weeding out the wrong people. But we, we, we cringe when we hear that and we softly let them know there's a better way and we'll eventually show them the better way. But like, what mm-hmm. do you, what do you think when you hear that? Well, so, so, so I just got off a call and I won't say the name, um, he, that he, he, he or she, cause I don't want to give it away, <laughs> said the same thing. They said, well, we have these, you should see our PDFs, Trevor. They are <laughs> good. And then he asked me, Trevor, but you're coming across like yeah. You, I don't know how to sell a franchise. Like, okay, well, if I'm coming off that way, then that means I'm doing this call all wrong. What I'm trying to do is challenge the thinking that's been going on. Is all that's all I'm trying to do. And so, if someone has a PDF and they're like, it's the best PDF, I would ask yourself, how do you turn that into a 25 step video where it's someone asking, all right, and I know, and I know that you're going to ask this question one. It's going to be this question, and like make it engaging 
And now people will actually retain information better. I, I, I saw a stat that when people watch a video versus reading, they will remember 80% of what they watch versus 20% of what they read. And then you tie emotion into it. And now this, the game's over. All right. So let's just talk about consumer testimonials. So yeah. we've been talking a lot about the franchise or helping the franchise or storytelling, franchise development, getting franchisees. Let's help the franchisees out that um, that need consumer testimonials. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm guessing this might be where the iPhone comes in. But I'm also um, open to you saying, Eric, you're all wrong here, and this is what you need to do. So help me, educate me, enlighten me, man. Yeah. I, I'm, so I will never become. You hate iPhones. Just say you hate iPhones. No, Just I think. Say it. I, so, Eric, as iPhones get better, there is a time and a place for them. But what people aren't, what they're forgetting is, do they know how to do a hook? Are they going to film the right content? Are they going to schedule the kids together? Are they going to schedule the customer handshaking? It, it's so much more than that. So iPhones have a place, absolutely. But what I'm talking about is more of the lead gen stuff. Uh, uh, someone go to the yeah. these local, local website. They have all these services. And I know that Franchise does a fantastic job. The problem is the prospect doesn't know that. Everyone's worried about the hand demand that's going to be late. The plumber that's going to wreck their wreck their blah blah blah. So we're once again missing the validation. So whether it's the franchisee or the franchisor, being able to create customer marketing videos that every franchisee can use nationally, and then you localize it. Now there's validation on every single service. I I read a stat and it was having a customer testimonial video next to your highest revenue service will increase the leads by like 140 percent or something insane because now there's validation of bob susie mary that just went through this so let's talk about brands because some brands don't have the budget or don't want to put the budget towards um high quality high high uh um production valuable video content do you work mostly with brands that at franchise filming, do you work with brands that are, have big budgets already, or do you work with emerging brands that have small budgets? Yeah. So we like to target right. franchise brands with anything over 35 units. Um, we found out that anything below that, we're, we're usually too much of a white glove service. Mm -hmm. Like we handle everything. We bring four guys on set. There's two editors. We just, it's why our videos are so inspiring and so and so real, right? And we have a 324 step system that we built to be able to effectively film nationally. So sometimes the brands are like, we're not there yet, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm trying to reach, I forgot the other question that you asked and I totally forgot. <laughs> no, these two different brands that you got, the, yeah. you got the smaller emerging brands and the larger brands, like what, what, um, like who do you like to work with? I mean, mm. who, who has the budget to work with you? So usually our target is any franchisor over 75. And by the way, I'm going to interrupt you one more time just to see if you can remember the question I just asked you. No, Please I was do. on with the, <laughs> with the, with the uh, wolf of uh, the wolf the other day. And I was talking about something. I totally forgot what I was talking about. And I said, we're definitely not editing that out. And then he did the same thing. And I, and I, and I teased him. Uh, like yep. crazy for it. And, um, mm -hmm. and we did not edit that out either. So it just goes into Keep being in. authentic. I'm, 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 I'm all about that. Uh, well, so anyway, I had to say that because you are not alone in forgetting what you were going to say. Cause I do that. So all keep the it time. in authentic and real Eric. There we go. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So back to budgets yeah. on, you know, the, the emerging brand versus the more established brand, the best, you know, at what point are they able to have that budget to work with you? Yeah, so our bread and butter is helping Zors that have over 75, 75 units, whether it's franchisee videos, consumer videos, training videos. Those are the three verticals that we specialize in. Um, and there's usually some more resources and buy-in, honestly, at that level to just execute. Um, 
Because Eric, I do want to um, hit on this. There's always a place for an internal videographer, a full-time mm -hmm. person, always Talk a place. Talk to me about it. I like it. And some other people on, on my team might not be happy that, that I said that, but there's always a place for them. But that doesn't mean they can do at scale what you need because when they're filming, they're not editing. When they're editing and filming, they're not scheduling. When they're on the road, they're not filming editing and it breaks. So half the brands we work with, they have an internal guy and they're our best friend. He's like, dude, this is the best footage I've ever had. Oh my God. So we, we make a bunch of videos and they get the raw footage and this editor and this internal guy looks like a rock star. So I usually get that question. Well, we have an internal guy and I ask how long did the videos take? Oh my God, it takes us nine months to do something. Awesome. We take nine days. So that that's that's the pain point there. <clears throat> yep. A hundred percent. Um, let's talk about that brand. What advice would you give to the brand that has less than five franchisees and mm -hmm. they're probably going and they're, you know, a year old and they are not going to be at 30 franchisees for probably another 18 to 24 months? What do you suggest they do with video? Um, to get to the point where they have the budget to be able to do something mm -hmm. better. So those brands watching at that level, I can already, I already know the three videos that you're missing, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's a local guy, you need to get something, right? Something's better than nothing, right? The three things that they're missing, Eric, one is the brand story. And who's the founder at that level? You got to make the founder front and center. Right. Um, People don't trust his brand because you're not big. I mean, you're not established yet. That's the second thing they, they need is your franchisee that's killing it. I mean, a franchisee that's rocking, rolling. They they have a better life. And you talk about the benefits of starting with a smaller brand, like just hit uh -huh. on that. And the third thing is, is a rec recruitment video at the local level, giving franchisees, all of them to be able to use kind of a front line worker recruitment video to make sure the franchisees can get staff and engage staff. So um, that would be my advice of the videos I know that they need and they probably don't have. Do you want to give any shout outs to any brands for people to go look at where you have an example of each mm -hmm. one of those? Yeah. So our website's franchisefilming.com. But if you go on Fast Signs, Neighborly, uh, in Power Brands, uh, United Franchise Group, all of those sub brands have our videos um, on there and they are full of story and they are unscripted, which is one of my favorite things. What do you mean unscripted? Tell me more about that because I think people probably think about having some type of script. So what do you mean by unscripted? What does that really mean? Prompting questions and then and then just letting it flow? So you, you, you want to guide people, right? So the franchisor's words, how franchisors phrase it is never as cool and as smooth as they think it is. Right. And it's the same thing. I tried to script something for my team, say this about working for us like years ago. And they're like, Trevor, that sounds literally like the stupidest robotic thing in the world. Right. Cause I talk about, we've had so much growth and we have a new office in Long Beach and it's like, no one cares. Right. So but when I asked my team, Eric, why do you like working for me? Some of the answers made me tear up because it was like, it was the emotional reason. It was, I love my job. I love waking up. I love that we dedicate time to learning, just stuff I would never think people would care about. So having questions, 10, for each interview that you do and make them about emotion and feeling. And you're going to get some of the best answers that you've ever gotten. And the rare times, Eric, where someone really isn't getting it, like they're not giving us the answers, then just don't use them in the video. It's why you film 10 people on site, not just one. But my one final piece of thought there, Eric, the person that you think that's listening, oh, I can never talk to Timmy. He's going to talk so bad on film. They usually do the best. And the person you think is going to do the best, that's really cocky, they always do the worst. Because it's, they're so, they're authentic. So. Well, this has been helpful. 
Um, I think like I, I told you before we hit record that we've never really had anybody on to talk about storytelling and filming and, and whatnot. So, um, this was, uh, this was awesome. This was helpful. I hope the franchisees kind of have a roadmap, whether they're emerging brands or, you know, they're bigger brands. I think bigger brands should absolutely be, be having a conversation with you, especially if you have an in, I, I love what you said. If you have an in-house videographer, like they love working with you. So there's always, there's so many levels to this game in franchising. And then you're just, you're just playing at another level. And I love it, man. Thank you. Yeah. And then the question as we begin to fade out, Eric, the question to ask yourself, if you have an internal video guy, who's awesome, ask yourself, how long did that last video take to create? And that's the answer that you will need, right? Is if it took nine months, that's not scalable no matter how yeah. great they are. So um, when you go out, kind of one of the last questions, when you go out, do you like to go out to like a discovery day or a, uh, like a, uh, the convention? Like what's the, what's the best place for you to get the most, like get the most amount of filming in, in a short period of time? Eric, I love how you hit on that because I was just on a call with a brand. They're like, I just want filming at our yearly event. It's like awesome. We can get thirty people in one day. We'll we'll have we'll schedule all of it. We'll like tackle the franchisees and say, "Come and film for seven minutes." We we have it down to like a science. But what they're forgetting, Eric, is what I said at the front. Where's the story? Where's painting the picture? So you have all these interviews, but where's the visual of what they're talking about? So I tell franchise brands have a film crew at your event, but make sure you have content before and after of what they're talking about, their life getting better, their life at work, them with their kids. Um, I would say their yearly event, Eric, is the best place to get a bunch of franchisees. Um, and discovery days are awesome, are also a cool way to kind of get an insight to make sure, I mean, why should someone take that leap and hop on a plane to go to your discovery day? How have you painted a picture? Mm -hmm for them right so um yeah that's what i would that's what i would uh recommend with that awesome man well this has been fun we'll have to get you back on sometime after the masters releases to kind of kind of talk about that whole process and see how it worked out but i think um people should go check out franchisemasters.com and then uh once again how do people find you yeah so it's franchisefilming.com or Trevor, T-R-E-V-O-R at FranchiseFilming.com. And I'm proud to say, Eric, I think you shared it out. We actually just launched a newsletter on LinkedIn. We post weekly updates and that's franchise video uh, storytelling. Um, and it's free weekly tips and we give all of our secrets away. So Dude, should definitely get involved with that. And then there's a LinkedIn group too for Franchise Masters. So check out that LinkedIn group and I'm sure I'll be posting it in the Franchise Secrets Facebook group. So yes, thanks sir. again, man. Awesome, Eric. Thank you, sir. Thanks for listening to the Franchise Secrets Podcast. Links to everything can be found over at FranchiseSecrets.com. And if you want my help with anything from starting your own franchise to growing your current franchise business, please visit ScalableFranchise.com.